Hey, Mike here, working with this little DC compressor, brushless DC, uh, 80 watt maximum input power. Uh, I think it's like 2.7 cc rotary compressor. Uh, kind of building a little um, crude dehumidifier. Uh, it's not small in terms of the coils. The coils come out of 5,000 BTU per hour uh, air conditioner. Um, the uh, the system is uh, running with those same coils, but it's running with a small uh, you know, brushless DC you know computer case fan uh, as its ventilation. So it's pulling air across the evaporator through the condenser and then on out through the fan. Um, refrigerant is uh, uh, barbecue grade propane HD5. Um, I guess I've got a little bit of fluttering there going on. I'm probably going to switch over to a glycerin uh, low side gauge. Uh, I am uh, getting a little bit better performance uh, since the last video. Uh, I've reduced the uh, the length of the cap tube three times actually. The first time started 12 feet of 0.031 inch bore uh, capillary tube. 12 feet was the beginning. Uh, second, uh, first time that I changed it over, um, modified it, I shortened it by one foot to 11 feet. Third time was to uh, uh, another foot, and then, um, uh, and then, most recently, I, I took two feet off. So there is uh, there's there's eight feet of that bore capillary tubing there. Um, I was noticing I was getting a lot of uh, was freezing up very rapidly on the low side. Uh, couldn't get my head my uh, uh, suction pressure very high. Um, you know, tremendous amount of superheat coming back. Uh, all my refrigerant was vaporizing away. Didn't have enough mass flow to feed the evaporator properly. So, um, shorten the cap tube significantly, played around with the refrigerant charge a little bit, still ended up with around three and a half ounces, uh, until I got to this point here, where uh, I'm actually getting some, uh, some condensation is forming, as you can see down there. But uh, I still think that the evaporator is largely uh, underutilized. Um, I do have some concerns now based on my suction temperature the amount of load on the compressor, the, the, uh, the, the system's definitely running better. Um, discharging a fair amount of heat, which is a tremendous sign. Um, tone of the compressor has changed quite a bit. Um, it's definitely loaded down a bit more. I don't have any uh, um, uh, current information to determine how much uh, load it is. Uh, I can say on the condenser, uh, rather than just having uh, a lot of heat on the first coil, you know, coil or two, uh, it's actually fairly warm, good uh, halfway down through, and then we're probably getting into the subcooling down here where it's uh, returning to uh, to ambient temperature, if not below. Um, so it's getting a lot of subcooling. Um, however, the evaporator isn't isn't very well utilized. So I'm starting to wonder if uh, I'm getting uh, a large pressure drop across the evaporator. Um, I'm taking my uh, suction pressure close to the compressor. I am at this point very curious what the pressure is right here after the capillary tube and the inlet of the evaporator. So what I may be doing, the next modification is get a little, uh, uh, one of these little piercing valves that you can braze to a line. Uh, so I don't necessarily have to poke in there and introduce any copper and then braze something to it. There, there's a fitting I've been wanting to try for a while that uh, pierces and then saddles the copper and then you can braze it right to the line. And that way I'll be able to put another port, uh, a suction port, on that end of the evaporator and I can uh, see what the difference in pressure there is, see if there's a much of a pressure drop because I'm starting to get some indication that that, that is occurring. So as you can see, that little compressor is doing some dehumidification but it's not significant enough. It's probably all re-evaporating passing through the airstream, so it's not kind of condensing and dripping down in the tray. All in all, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. Um, need to do a little bit more work. Um, decided this evening that uh, I'll be focusing a lot on a refrigerator, uh, which in many ways will be a lot easier than a dehumidifier or an air conditioner. But uh, nonetheless, since I have this test platform set up, I want to continue on with uh, this until I can uh, get something meaningful out of it. I have uh, been learning quite a bit from the machine. Um, anybody out there interested in working with something like this, uh, these small compressors can be purchased on eBay for a reasonable amount of money from China. Um, you have to do some brazing to do the connecting, everything. Uh, everything in this system is quarter inch, except for the capillary tubing. Uh, that capillary tubing can be purchased online or, um, uh, or found at a you know, local refrigeration supply house. Uh, a lot of the fittings here are all 
a quarter inch flare. Uh, so you need a flaring tool to flare out the copper and uh, buy some of these nuts. You can get a pretty good deal on eBay. Or, you know, you can buy them at the hardware store. They're very expensive as you buy them at the hardware store. Uh, the uh, copper, like it says, quarter inch ACR tubing. So it's a air conditioning and refrigeration grade. It's got a thicker wall than the utility grade tubing. Um, but utility grade would work as well for these lower end pressures. Uh, it's a filter dryer kit purchased uh, on eBay. They're very inexpensive. Again, the capillary tubing. Uh, uh, air conditioner parts. Uh, here's a little service valve that I have installed on a brass quarter inch flare T. Uh, so the flares make it very easy to uh, to take everything apart and if you're just doing a test. Um, it's also important with these small compressors uh, if you don't quite have the system figured out, you're not quite sure how oil is migrating around the system to uh, shut it down once in a while and uh, empty out the oil. See how much oil is remaining in the compressor because that could be an issue Thanks for watching.